And welcome back. Thanks so much for tuning in to Morning Live. Now, the normalization of exclusion is one of the main impediments to the progress of women leadership and gender equality around the world. And that's the sentiment expressed by the head of UN Women, who also welcomed the recent gender parity achieved in the cabinet of Ethiopia, Rwanda and the Seychelles. And speaking exclusively with SABC News on women's leadership in Africa, Dr. Pumzile Mlambo Nguka has warned that while progress was being made on the continent, women's leadership in Africa overall is yet to be seen as the success story that it should be. This report by Show and Bryce Pease. With Ethiopia and Rwanda joining the slim global ranks of cabinets with 50% or more women representation, the total number globally now rises to just 10. The others, France, Sweden and Spain in Europe, Costa Rica, Colombia and Nicaragua in South America and Canada. Very encouraged, very excited. Uh, it helps to boost our campaign uh, for Planet 5050 before 2030. Uh, we want to see this in cabinets because in cabinets are at least one institution where one person, the head of state, can actually make a decision. And in many cases, there's a very good pipeline to choose from. And Rwanda, Seychelles, and Ethiopia, and the uh, other countries uh, in the world that have done that are proving it. There's 10 countries now in the world that have 50-50 cabinets. Sorry. She says there is a higher representation of women in public sector leadership throughout Africa than in the private sector, but even so, the averages remain low. Certainly there's higher representation of women in the public sector, but not high enough even in Africa uh, to call it a, a big success story yet. Um, Africa, for instance, uh, the leadership in parliament is on average 23%, uh, which is just above uh, or just about around the global um, uh, average. Uh, there's countries that are still below, so the fact that Africa is on the global average is not a big consolation. We definitely can do much better than that because AU already uh, took decisions that enforce 50-50 in all decision uh, making institution within the AU. Only five countries on the continent have enacted legislation to counter gender pay gap discrimination. South Africa, Angola, Kenya, Chad and Morocco. And despite the slow progress, Mlambunguka believes the demands on women who lead continues to be greater than their male counterparts. If these women don't succeed, they get uh, unfair and very harsh uh, scrutiny. Uh, I have to say, though, that a significant number of women who have occupied this very important position have really tried and worked very hard. That is why the limited progress that we have seen um, has looked like it is much more bigger then it, 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 it really is, there's an illusion of success. It has to do with the fact that uh, the few men that have been there have been uh, able to, to project very strongly. One woman trying to do the job of five men has seemed like uh, uh, she's five women. And uh, it shouldn't be like that. Uh, we need to be able to have both men and women of equal numbers without putting extraordinary pressure on women leaders. Urging greater political will and a greater public angst when women's leadership does not adequately reflect a country's or company's demographic. If you think of the countries that have been able to take uh, the step, the three in, in Africa, those presidents uh, must have clearly thought about what statement they wanted to make. And when I look at the lineup of the women who are in this position, they're really strong and solid. And they are occupying significant position in those cabinets. It's defense, it's trade, it's health, uh, it's foreign affairs. So they are not pushovers. And many of them come with accolades into the job. A luta continua, or the struggle continues. What remains unclear is whether victory for women, particularly in Africa, is certain. Sherwin Bryce Pease, SABC News, New York.